God is love. As Charles Wesley writes, Jesus, thou art all compassion, pure, unbounded love, thou art. Amen. Today we'll read our Old Testament lesson from the book of Exodus. That's the second book of Moses. We'll read Exodus 3, 13 through 15. Moses is speaking to God who has appeared to him in the burning bush. Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The the God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me. To you. God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever. This is my title for all generations. A quick comment. In the Bible, we do not find the word Yahweh listed because the Hebrews believed it was inappropriate to speak the name of God. So instead, they always wrote the Lord. The Lord. Y-H-W-H. Yahweh. This is my name forever. I am. Now we turn to the Gospel of John, which we will be reading this year. We're going to read John chapter 8, verse 58. Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, before Abraham was, I am. Today's sermon is titled, A Message from St. John. And indeed, St. John has come to us to speak. So here he is. Thank you, brothers and sisters in Christ for inviting me here to be your gospel messenger this year. It is now 2022. Lord, think of that. The year of our Lord, 2022. I want to begin my year with you with one of my favorite sayings. Little children love one another. It is the Lord's command. And if this alone be done... It is enough. According to the early church father, Jerome, this was my last utterance as I went to meet my maker. Why not? Is this not a summary of all the life and teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ? And believe me, God knows all there is to know about love. God is love, you see. And God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son so that whoever believeth on Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. This, John 3.16, is the heart of the Gospel. So good morning to you all. I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ. A disciple who loves Jesus Christ and is indeed loved by him. My followers honor me by calling me the beloved disciple. I'm the witness whose testimony is the basis for the fourth gospel, the book you know as the gospel 
according to St. John. Since the earliest days of the church, you see, I've been identified as the Apostle John, one of the twelve sent by Jesus to proclaim the good news to the world. I am the son of Zebedee and Salome, the brother of the Apostle James, and I will be your guide to Jesus Christ this liturgical year. Now I realize, and I want you to realize, that I was there. I was there, brothers and sisters. I was there. I saw Jesus with my own eyes. I heard Jesus with my own ears. I shared his joys and his sorrows. I was there, and my testimony is the truth. We were mending our nets, you see, my brother James and I and our partners, Simon Peter and Andrew, when Jesus called us to become fishers of men. We dropped our nets and followed him, and we've followed him faithfully ever since, to our graves and beyond. I was there in Galilee when Jesus taught the crowds, when he performed miracles of healing and exorcism. I was there when he fed the hungry multitudes. I was there when he forgave sinners. I was there when he showed us the way. I was there when Jesus was transfigured on the mountaintop. And I was there on the road with him to Jerusalem. I was there on Palm Sunday. And I was there when he cleansed the temple. And yes... Yes, I was there in the upper room reclining beside him when he served us the Lord's Supper. I was there in the Garden of Gethsemane. I could not keep my eyes open while Jesus prayed that night. Yes, I was there when Judas betrayed him with a kiss. I was there when Jesus was taken away by the mob. Peter and I followed at a distance and we were there in the high priest's courtyard while Jesus was being questioned. I was there at the foot of the cross when Jesus was crucified, and it was to me that he entrusted his own mother's care. Oh yes, I was there in the upper room on the joyous third day when the women burst in telling us that the stone had been rolled away and the tomb was empty. Peter and I ran to see the empty tomb with our own eyes. I was there when the risen Christ came to us in the upper room as we hid in fear. I was there when Thomas doubted. I was there when Jesus called us from the seashore and fed us a breakfast of fish. My testimony is true. I was there when our Savior ascended into heaven, and I was there at Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came down on us. I was there, I saw, I heard. My testimony is true. I do not lie. Based on the Gospels, the book of Acts, the writings of such early church historians as Irenaeus, Eusebius, Jerome, Nicephorus, Tertullian, and Clement of Alexandria, and the traditions of the church, scholars such as William Barclay and William Stuart McBurney have sought to piece together a history of my later life. While these traditions do not always agree, it seems that I remained in Jerusalem after Christ's ascension, and faithfully cared for Jesus' mother, Mary. I worked with Peter in his early evangelistic efforts in Jerusalem and Judea. And after my brother James was martyred, the Jewish insurrection began, and Jerusalem and the temple were destroyed. Then I moved north to Ephesus 
I became bishop, overseer, to the seven churches in Asia and spiritual leader of what is known as the Johannine community. Due to the convincing passion of my preaching, I was imprisoned on the island of Patmos. It was there that I received from Jesus Christ the marvelous visions now recorded in the book of Revelation. And upon the death of Emperor Domitian I, I was released. And I even converted my former jailer to Christianity. Think of that. Once safely home in Ephesus, I continued the Lord's work to my very old age. And I wrote the three epistles that bear my name from Ephesus. The churches I founded collected my testimonies. They shaped them together into the Gospel of John, which was put into its final form after my death. Did I truly write all five books of the Bible known as the Johannine literature? The Gospel according to John? The first, second, and third epistles of John? And the revelation of Jesus Christ to St. John? You be the judge. What does it really matter anyway? You see, all five of these books were inspired by the Holy Spirit of God. And they were based on my testimony. And all five have apostolic authority. All five are accepted by the church as Holy Scripture, the rule of faith and life. You may ask, why did I write my gospel? Well, you need look no further than John 20, 31 for the answer to that question. So that you may come to believe in Jesus Christ, and that through believing, you might have life in His name. You see, Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Jesus Christ is the Savior of humankind. Jesus died on the cross to reconcile us with God. Jesus Christ rose again on the third day. He ascended to heaven, and even now, even now, in 2022, Jesus Christ sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. See, Jesus is our living God. Even now, He lives in community with us, guiding us through the paraclete, the Holy Spirit. I begin my gospel by reminding us that Jesus is the Word of God. The Word of God, the means by which God is active in the world. The Word was with God and the Word was God at the creation and before. And He, even now, is God and forever He will be God. Jesus is the Word made flesh, who came to dwell with us and show us the way. There are lots of stories about Jesus, not all of which appear in my gospel. My followers, in their appendix to my testimony, which you'll read as chapter 21, wrote these words. If every one of the things that Jesus did were written down, the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. Matthew, Mark, and Luke did a fine job of collecting many of these stories and preserving them in their own gospel writings. My gospel is not always parallel to theirs. Instead, my gospel is a reflection, a reflection upon the life and teachings of Jesus, a spiritual gospel, if you will. You see, during my long life, I had many, many opportunities to reflect upon the things that I saw and heard while following Jesus. My conversations with Jesus continued after His death and His resurrection. 
I prayed, I meditated, I received inspiration from the Holy Spirit for many decades after the events described in the Gospels. So what I've sought to do in my Gospel of Jesus Christ, pure and simple, is to provide you, provide you with unmistakable signs that Jesus Christ is indeed the divine God, yet also your own personal Savior. I want you to know Jesus, to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and to let Jesus open your blind eyes and lead you out of darkness into light. In my gospel, you'll find seven signs. Seven, the number of completeness. Seven signs that Jesus is indeed the Son of God and embodies the power of the Holy Spirit of God. The seven signs are, one, water changed to wine at the wedding feast in Cana. Second, a royal official son healed through faith. Third, a lame man healed on the Sabbath at the pool of Bethsaida. Fourth, the feeding of the 5,000. Fifth, Christ walks on water. Sixth, the man born blind is given his sight by Jesus. And seventh, Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. Seven signs. Water changed to wine, an official son healed. A lame man healed on the Sabbath. The feeding of the 5,000, Christ walks on water. A blind, my, a blind man is given sight, and Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. Can there be any doubt? Can there be any doubt who this man, Jesus of Nazareth, must be? Or whence he derives his power. Beyond these seven is the ultimate sign. The ultimate sign, of course, and the subject of the ending chapters of my gospel is the resurrection from the dead of Jesus himself. Jesus the Christ. Jesus, the Messiah, is the Son of God, the Word of God made flesh. He is victorious even over death itself. Interspersed among these seven signs are also seven great metaphors of the work of God the Father through Jesus Christ the Son. As you declared in your call to worship this morning, Jesus taught us that if we know Him, we will know His Father also. John 14, 6 and 7. If we know Jesus, we will know his Father also. So what's the Father like? Before answering that question, we must grasp the significance of your scripture lessons this morning. You see, the name of God is Yahweh, I Am. God himself told us so in Exodus 3.14. I am who I am. I will be what I will be. That's why the Jews were so upset when Jesus made the statement in John 8, 58. Very truly I tell you, before Abraham was, I am. Jesus is declaring here that anyone who wants to know God can grasp the true nature of God by examining the actions of Jesus the Christ, the Word made flesh at work in the world. And when we do, what will we see? What does Jesus teach us? Here are seven truths, the seven metaphors themselves. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the gate for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. 
I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the vine. When we know Jesus, we'll know God at work in the world. As the bread of life and the light of the world. As the gate for the sheep, the good shepherd, the resurrection and the life, the way, the truth and the life, the vine. Abide with me. Sisters and brothers of the third millennium of our Lord, are you walking in darkness? Are you blind and yet wish to see? Do you want truly to know God? Are you seeking eternal salvation? If so, and I certainly hope you are, then read the Gospel of John, for it is as relevant today as it was the day it was first written. What a fine resolution for the year of our Lord 2022. Read the Gospel of John. Children of God, this testimony, my testimony, the Gospel of John was written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing in Him, you may have life in His name. Amen and Amen. Now let us pray to God. Almighty and ever-living, ever-loving God, Your Son, Jesus Christ, healed the sick, Restored them to wholeness of life. Shalom. He opened the eyes of the blind so that they may see. And He showed us the way from darkness into light. Look with compassion on the anguish of the world. By Your power make whole all peoples and nations. Open our eyes that we may see. This we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with You and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The grace of the Lord Jesus, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, both now and forevermore. Alleluia. Amen.